The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Welcome to Gen XYZ. As you all know, this is a program where we'll be talking about contemporary and pertaining topics and issues based on the youth. Now today on the program, we will be literally elaborating our program name, Generation X, Generation Y and Generation Z. Now this topic which we are going to talk about today is a very complicated and very controversial topic, I would say. And it's about bridging the minds and thoughts and bridging the generation gap. Now today on the program we have three guests who will be representing all three generations. So why don't we go inside and have a look who we have. Alright, so with that I would like to introduce our three guests to you. First I would like to introduce Dr. Sulochana Sigera who is the founder of New Generations Awards and she's a very inspirational character I would say who has been working with the youth right now and she's inspired so many younger women out there. It's nice to have you on the show Doctor. Thank you. And also we have Onela uh, Karunanayaka, who is the Executive Director of OSM Holdings Private Limited. Thank you very much for joining with us on the show. Glad to be here. And also we have Ilham Azmoun, who is sc currently schooling right now at DSA Nanayaka College and seems to me like you are quite a bright case. Thank, Thank you. you for joining with Thank us on the show. Right to start off our discussion. I honestly don't know where to start off with because this is a very irritating topic for me and it's a very vast topic that I would say that the youth is currently facing right now and they also don't know how to address this issue. Right, so Dr. Sulochana, since you are the most senior and the most experienced person here, uh, I would like to know your intake about what you think about Generation Y and Z, what are your perspectives of them? I think they are good, they are exciting and they should be existing. They are the future of Sri Lanka, they are the future of the world. It's just that uh, we, our generation also has not grabbed them and they also has not grabbed us and we have started blaming each other. They say we do not understand them and uh, we say they are not understanding us and they do not have values. That's the main uh, reason I think we see about this blame game coming on. But uh, they need to be uh, uh, in the society and because they are the future. And what I think is accepting, respecting both generation would make a bright future for Sri Lanka. So right now you feel that generation X and Z, sorry, Y and Z is not uh, paying enough respect to Generation X or is that what No, anyway that uh, generation is not thinking about respect or anything. They, they always think about, you know, they have their own goals. They have their own way of thinking, right? Where our generation is all about values and all about, you know, because we saw it, we lived it in a physical way. That generation, I would say, the youngest generation, generation is more on the virtual life and um, that's not wrong at all because we created that for them right so we are the creators and they are the users right so it's sometimes um, they do respect and they more value uh, relationships than us where we stay in a relationship for some reason but they value that very much and also they do not want to do the same thing. So that's I think uh, you cannot blame them because that's their future and that's the new life. So you are telling Generation X should be accepting what Y and Z is right now. Yeah and the same way it goes to them also because they should understand they are existing because of us. Yes, of course. So, Onela and uh, Ilham, do you agree with uh, Dr. Sulojana on what she said and her perspective of the younger generation? Or do you all have another perspective of what you think about Generation X? No, I think uh, Dr. Sulojana actually uh, spoke and covered a lot 
uh, on the topic. All I have to say is being in the generation or the person that I am today, what we need to do is always take the experience from the generations before us, also learn some of the traits of the younger generation, how they do things as well, because they are also being really innovative. They are being, uh, they're doing amazing things. But it's not just about innovating and keeping a product there. You need to also have the experience how to implement it and it should be done in a very um, cohesive manner where uh, from generation to generation, like Dr. Sulochna also said, we need to all understand each other. Ilham, what are your thoughts on Generation X? Yeah, so I am with uh, Sulochana, Dr. Sulochana and also her also. So I am representing the youngest generation here. Yes. <laughs> so my opinion is we should obey all the generations or elder generation because without them we are not here today to be honest. So for example, we think we are like we can do everything uh, yeah, in that it's a unique to us in our yes. generation. We think we are best, we are free. But to be honest, we can't stay, I can't stay uh, one week without my parents. That's the truth. So we need them. So yeah, we need to stay with them. We have to communicate with, with them. They have a lot of experiences. So they have developed the country, they have developed the many things. They have lived longer than us now. So we have to get things from them uh, and yeah, that's it. So tell me some of the challenges. Have you ever faced any controversies with your parents or the generations above you which they have not agreed with you in some uh, levels? Yeah, yes, yes. so like <laughs> at home for example when, uh, when I'm using phone and my mother's phone is, doesn't work, yeah. she blames me like you yeah, know all the thing but uh, my phone is working so there are some things I also don't know. So that issue I don't know how to fix it. Then she will blame me like, you know all the things, but uh, you are not helping me. But to be honest, I don't know how to fix it. So there are some controversials, but uh, that's good. So like we have to fight. So you think that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a, without uh, fights and all stuff, the relationship won't be alive. Like you have to be <laughs> energetic. So like that's like, I think fights makes relationships stronger, generations stronger. I'm not telling real physical fight, just yes, fight. just yeah. little arguments, little arguments yeah. just to keep everything lively. Yeah. All right, so now there's this thing around the world where people are talking about, okay, the generation, the blame is being passed to the next. Like, of course, even our generation, we're probably blaming the younger kids or even Generation X is blaming their kids for doing something. So always there is a blame for one generation. Do you think that's persistent? Or do you think that's going to be happening for the next few years or so? I think that's just, um, that's just being human. It's always, um, we always try, when something gets stuck somewhere, we always try to either blame somebody or find something apart from us. I think where we need to go is we need to take a deep look inside ourselves. This is what I always said. We need to sit and figure out either why someone is saying no or why someone is you know, saying a different answer to what we really want. And uh, having that understanding, having that understanding alone I think will sort out quite a few things. It's not just to blame someone and go, you have to, you can't have a problem always, you should have a problem with a solution, Yes. right? So that's actually, my, that's where I come with this whole blame thing, not just to blame, but uh, find out where we can go on from there. Certainly uh, to my generation plus the younger generation as well, we need to give them more, uh, we need to give them uh, the ability to, to do things. We need to trust in them, but we also need to seek the older generation's experiences and learn from them as well. So it's not just a blame, figuring out the, the, the bond between, like he said, the two generations and going at it. Yeah, that's the only that's way we can keep things smooth and, and going forward, I think. When it comes to the blame game, it's said that, you know, 
one generation will always blame the younger generation. Dr. Solution, what do you think about that or does it happen the other way around also? Do, uh, one, does one generation blame the older generation? I think it's happened the other, both ways because mm -hmm. I blame sometimes my parents, right? Right. So, and my children blame us, right? So, what I see is, as I think before the discussion also I said, my mother, um, my grandmother was using, I would say using the land phones, right? Mm -hmm. And we were using, uh, my mother was using the button phone and then the smartphone, then the iPhone, right? <laughs> so, the next one will be the chip, right? So those are the difference on the generations now, mm -hmm. right? So it's a blame game comes when you don't get yes for everything, what we say and what the new generation says. When it comes no or but, mm -hmm. then the blame game starts, right? Because we are not being groomed to accept no for an answer. We want everyone to agree on everything what we are saying. And it's with us and it's with them also, right? They want parents to understand them and agree in them. And we want our children to understand us and agree in us. So this agreement issue comes and then we blame each other. So if a success of a child comes, yes, it's for the success of that generation and for the parents, elders also. But when it failure comes, it's mainly 99% it's our generation who's blamed because they were still coming up. We were not being able to mentor it. So I won't blame my children or them or the younger generation for what's happening because I think we should let them do some mistakes, mm -hmm. right? But repeating the same mistake, then the blame should be on them, not on the elders, That's right? True. So that is, I think, accountability is one of the key words that parents also should understand. Our generation also should be accountable for the X and Y. Mm -hmm. And also, they also should be responsible and accountable for their actions. So I, my this thing is blame game will be there. They also will blame someday. They will start blame them. And they will start blame the new peer people, who are children who are going to come. So it will be there, but how you forget about blame and accept no as an answer and also give them the options. That's something which I would also like to agree. Now when a person needs to understand something, they have to go through that process. Like even if the parents tell a child, okay, this is bad for you, they will not understand it because they have not gone through it. So once a person goes through that problem only, they will understand, yes, this is what my parents said and they were right. Or probably the other way around. And another point, uh, Dr. Suluchana, you mentioned was the development and advancements. Do you think that every generation would adapt to these technological advances, trends, thinking patterns? Because I see a gap there it's very difficult for one generation to adapt into this new lifestyle and uh, the baby boomers are I think having a little bit of a hard time there trying to accept what their older generation feels about it. So what are your thoughts on that? I, I cannot be an iPhone user, right? <laughs> so that's the first example because I do not know what it says about I rather have a smartphone, right? But my mother cannot use a smartphone, she still wants a button phone, right? So I think we find it. So I always blame my daughter and because I can't get hold of her phone and do things. As, she, as he said, he may not know everything, but we expect them to know everything about the phone. Because that's what we think. Right. That's my question. Why does Generation X want the younger generation to be knowing everything? That's what I said, that's because we think we developed something and gave it to them mm -hmm. and they should be knowing that because we wanted them to obey and learn it. We do not understand, that's called empathy. We are not understanding what they are going through. They are not, our generation was worried about education and all. They are worried about the culture, the society, the environment, the uh, animals all those things. We never bothered about those things, right? Their purposes of life has changed. Yes. 
That's true. So we have to understand it, but unfortunately, I think most of us don't understand it, and that has to be changed from schools, from teachers, right? Then it goes to the parents, then it goes to the children. So that's where it is. Ina, would you like to tell us a little bit uh, yeah, about sure. yourself, like an experience that you sure. faced like this? So, uh, as the young generation, we are used to it to get the blames. <laughs> For uh, example, the blame is happening because, for example, we are normally asking permission from parents after we are planning everything. We are planning. So, for example, uh, when our, our friends have organized a trip, so they have arrange everything, food, the place, everything, everything. After that, only we are going to ask the permission from parents. Uh, mother, I have to go there, that I am with him, with her, blah, blah, blah. So, so he, oh yeah, my mother will tell, uh, don't go, don't go, it's not safe, it's not good, you are too small. Then, uh, then I'll think, what should I tell to my friends, friends. So they will think, so he, he's so childish, his parents won't give any spaces, their parents are strict. That's the issue. Then we are going, we are blaming our parents. You don't know anything. I am, I am, I am weak, uh, I am 18. So that's the simple example where we are blaming them. So, so how, we, how do you tackle this issue? What, what will you do at that point? So the best thing is we have to tolerate, we have to listen to parents. So some of them will tell like, I, I don't, I listen, don't, will not listen to my parents and I'll go. But at the end you have to come back home again. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. so that's it. So I think in, so we have to respect them because they might have experienced that. So in their, in their ages, uh, in their time, they might uh, had uh, accidents when they on trips. So that's why the telling don't go this stuff, this, this don't go. So we have to accept that. I think it's better to listen to parents, so older generation, than listen to our peers. Okay, so I think we unraveled a lot here. I think a lot of different views are coming out right now. But we'll have to go into a short break and you're watching Gen XYZ. We'll be back soon. Back to Gen XYZ, we've reached our second segment and I think in our first segment we unraveled quite a lot and I think we left off with Ilham, you know, giving a little bit of his experience with his parents and a uh, few of his naughty deeds and something that you uh, brought up which actually kicked me was about the trust you have with your parents. Like with the incident that you told me, like they would sometimes restrict you from growing out. Is it? because that they don't trust you or how do you take it when they tell uh, something like this? So yeah, so they are restraining us not at all the time. Yes. They are doing a specific time so not all the time so I, if I ask I want to go to for example one golf place they might give the permission. Mm -hmm. Not all the time they will restrict. So we have to understand because the situation we have to understand situation and surrounding. So it might be a family issue, we don't know, some, we have, sometimes our parents might have a financial issue. So in that mind uh, they will tell no, no, don't go, so because of that. But we have to accept all the situation, we are, we are from youngest generation, we are representing. So we have to accept them because their ideas are so valuable to us. They have learned, they have seen a lot of things. So that's the thing, so we have to accept, anyhow we have to accept, that's the main thing. Uh, Onil, I would like to get your thoughts on that, when he said we have to accept it. Do you think that Generation X also should be accepting it from our end as well or is it a controversial topic? <laughs> so I think it's a controversial topic for me because um, I, I don't think, when I was a child, I don't think I was the most obedient, the most uh, 
easy child to have, quite honestly. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But I think with age and maturity, um, I kind of started respecting them. So for me, it was, yeah, you obey them at a certain this thing as well, but I started really gaining a lot of respect for them. And that, I think, alone, I think, changed me a little bit because with that respect came a little bit of maturity as well. And with that maturity, I think they also started understanding me. And I started understanding them. Um, so I certainly think that um, it just, it takes time and, and it's, it's a circle. It takes time and maturity and this thing, but always, always, you should respect your elders, you should respect your parents especially. Because without their blessings, I don't think we would be anywhere. Um, but it does, it, it takes time, right? I'm not going to lie about that, it takes time. <laughs> Now, what are your thoughts on this about the trust you have for the younger generation? Okay, I used to say, everyone used to say, you know, your kids are big, now you don't have to bother. So I used to say, it's better when they are children, when they are schooling. So that's why when Ilham said, you have to accept and obey, I agree and I'm happy. <laughs> because that's the age we can control, right? But if you look at Onela's age, that's the age I don't trust at all because they are not going to agree and accept everything we have because they also have seen and they experience it right so my kids on like in their 20s so i know what they are going through and what i going through but what i say is the trust is not just the trust about ch uh, your children or this generation it's the trust that we do not have with the society because we are seen we have experience and we do not want the new generation like them and them to do the same mistakes we did it, right? So it's not that we are blaming or we are actually accusing them. We just are protective and we want them to do better than us. So I would prefer if my kids were like him because they <laughs> obey, because they have a school and you know, they have a rules. But if you look at Onel asks this thing, they are not going to there. As he said, yeah, we respect, we understand, and we feel sorry for them. So we respect and we, we do it in a way that they don't get hurt. That is called respect for them. Not that they are not doing, not doing, they are doing it. But in a way that it will not hurt the adults or the parents, right? So that's a difference. So I think trust is, every parent has a trust in their child. But they do not trust anyone who is uh, next to that your child or he can be your good friend, best friend, teacher or a colleague or even your the child children, they must be going to work, they are bosses, they will not trust. That's what you call a parent. I think you got a plus point from there, you know, from Dr. <laughs> Silokshana. Yeah, yeah, it's obvious for us, only uh, Onela, Aki in their generation is an issue. They are 22, <laughs> 23, you know, they are legal, okay. legally. Just hold legal. that thought and let's yeah. have a coffee sure. before it <laughs> gets cold. Thank you. Thanks. Why would you say that uh, Onela's generation would be getting the blame the most? No, in this case, because we are still uh, 17, 18, no? so we have a lot, uh, lot of time. So they are 22. Legally, 18, after 18, they, are, they can live alone. They can stay without parents. So that also comes into their mind when uh, taking decisions. So that freedom. For us, it's not. We have to stay home, we come, have to inform parents, that's all. But they don't have, that's why it's, it's a little bit uh, controversial for them. Yeah. Okay, Onela, would you like to agree with Ilam on this? Do you think that your generation is getting most of the blame here? <laughs> no, I, I just think, like I said again, it's, it's that whole circle of life. I think we're just a little bit further up ahead of uh, him, yeah. right? Where we've maybe seen a little bit more uh, experience a little bit more and had a little bit more responsibility to uh, take on and we are more accountable for every decision that we take every yes or no is something that I have to live with whereas when you take Dr. Sulochana she's seen let's say a little bit more than that right 
She's seen um, the good and the bad, right? What life really has to offer. And she's battled it the whole way through. And, I, and up to date, I'm, I'm in absolute admiration of her as to how she does it as well. Because I don't think I've experienced as half her life as she has, but I haven't seen someone do it as amazing as she does. And yeah. Okay, Anila, I think uh, I want to move now into the corporate side and I believe that you've worked previously also before starting becoming the director of your firm and uh, I prob you probably worked in two or three different firms before. What was your experience when you started working first? Did your seniors like treat you like a small person or did they trust you in, okay, this person is coming for an interview, I will be able to trust this person in order to handle this, like your first job. What was your uh, thought process there? So I actually started working just when I left school. So at 18, I actually started working. And that was something that I always wanted to do. Part of, you know, wanting to show my parents as well that I could take on the responsibility. And I, I, I got my own interview. I went, I sat through the interview. And it was really scary because I, I, it was my first interview. I didn't know what, um, what to say. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know what to do. But I wanted to take that on because I wanted to know that I can do it for myself. And yes, when, we, when I did get in um, to that company, it was, I, I worked my way up. I started right, um, right at the lowest level and I worked my way up. I learned how to, um, how to deal with everything, how to come up the ladder. Um, and then after a good five years, I joined my family company. And even there, I didn't just immediately go to the top as everybody would think when you have your own company. I also learned it from the bottom up. And um, I took my time and then at the point that I felt I would be able to handle the amount of uh, decisions and be responsible for each yes and no, like I said, then I started heading uh, the company. And that's when I started uh, coming up and now, um, yeah, come into the position that I am, uh, which I'm very thankful. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of work as well. But certainly when I started off to where I am, uh, it, it was it was tough because people see you as a young person. And um, I think now you, you still remain. The more you come up, the more you remain uh, responsible for every decision. But I still feel like today um, I'm, a, a la I'm, a, I'm a girl, I'm a lady. Um, but I'm also young, so it, it is still hard. Still, sometimes people may not be able to accept me sitting at a table and giving a decision. But I, I go every day, I fight for it, and I show that I'm worth that, and I, and I show what I bring to the table. Is it uh, worth fighting for, and is it difficult for you to do this? Do you consider it a hassle? I don't think it's, if you want to do something, it shouldn't be difficult. You should enjoy it, and you should, you should really go for it. Fear shouldn't stop you from uh, achieving what you want. But if, it, if you feel like it's a hassle, then that's probably not something that you want to do. Because everything that you really want to do, there'll always be a trouble, there'll always be a hurdle, there'll always be a hassle. But I enjoy it. I love uh, what I do. I love waking up every day and proving to people who think that I can't do it, yes, I can and I'm here. And the people who believe in me, to show them that, look, this is how much I have achieved. Okay, so Ilam, uh, what are your plans now? You're currently schooling. Yeah. Right after school, what are your future plans right now? Do you feel like going abroad or completing your higher studies? Yeah, so I don't have an interest in going abroad. Mm -hmm. So I want to stay in Sri Lanka, do something good for the country uh, mainly. So I won't, don't want to be in that queue for the passport office. I just want to be a responsible person to the country. So uh, my plans are mainly from Scotch, in Scotch. So uh, currently I'm number six. Uh, I have targets to be top four. Uh, my anyhow last dream is that my final goal is to be to get a medal from Commonwealth Commonwealth Games. It might get time, but definitely I will achieve it. I'm hoping to do it. That's very inspirational, and I'm like, oh, your dreams, where, where was it inspired from? Was it because your parents guided you to take this dream, or it was completely your decision? Uh, so I started Scotch 
uh, at grade three, I think, mm -hmm. grade three, four. At that time, I don't know about this stuff. But uh, after I'm playing, after two, five, four, five months, four, five years, I start to realize I have to do something because I have spent four, five years playing squash. So I have to like do something for it. I can't waste that time. So that that time only I realize I should have a dream from squash. So that's so, that. When you uh, portrayed this to your parents, yeah. how did they accept it? Were they really supportive about it? Yeah, do they encourage they, you? They are really support, supportive. Uh, I'm the third child. So my Aya and Aki also did sports. Used right. to, yeah. So they also did a national level, win national level. So they know about that. So automatically they started to support me also. Yes, of course. I also feel like, you know, parent support is needed in order for their child to be successful in one's life. But uh, now in the corporate world, I would say, ma'am, I think you also mentioned prior to this uh, program, they are planning to increase the retirement age. They are already done. Right. They have already done it. And why do you think uh, they have done it? Is it because that they don't trust the younger generation of taking over? Because I feel now once the retirement age uh, limit is increased, the less chance that the baby boomers have in order to get employed. Yeah, so as she said, I started my career when I was waiting for my O-levels and when I got my results, I went back to my A-levels, right? And I have been, I think I have sat for more than 15 interview boards from the uh, executive levels to the director boards to interview people. So what I have seen and what I have understood then and now is um, not that they do not have the trust. The baby boomers are not looking for career path, right? They wanted to get the job done and they want to leave it. We are in our age, we were given 10 years of service, 25 years of service and all that. Now you don't get a young, I would say young person coming in saying, another five years I'm going to be the CEO. No, they are not interested. And they are not looking at the corporate career path. They will ask you, what should I be doing? And what are my perks are? And they are looking at, is it worth for me to stay here? Right? So this culture has not got adapted to our corporate culture. Because corporate is looking for someone, they are investing on the employee, right? When they invest, they are looking at where after our investment goes, where is he or she going to be there? So it's, it's the, not the trust, they are, they are thinking whether it's a waste of time, waste of money on the investment. And also the retirement age is because our generation and the, uh, I would say, earlier than us, they are not good with technology. Now it's a technology driven. So they look for young people to run the technology of the corporates while they still hold the uh, paperwork and the traditional work, right? So that is the main reason and the corporates prefer to have all the peop or older people in the corporates because they feel that they will fix the things, the gaps what uh, the new generation is going to make, right? And the trust of the technology is not there in that corporate scene. Still, we believe that paper uh, need to be there and the signature, digital signature is not trusted, right? We still feel that physical signature is, should be there. So that is one of the reasons I feel uh, why the, uh, I would say, uh, retirement age being increased and also the productivity wise young generation has more productivity but attitude wise there is a huge issue with the attitudes and um, other thing what I see is not that attitude is bad or negative because we filter words our generation filter words you all very straightforward if it is no for you it's no there's no room for you all to have a second chance or think and come back. You will ask, uh, am I in or not? That's all you want. And you all are prefer flat organization structure, where we preferred hierarchy. 
right? And our generation got qualification with experience. Baby boomers get the diploma, get the degree, get the MBA, MBA, PhD. Lot of paper qualification have been ticked without attitude, aptitude and skills. So there is a huge gap in the corporates. That's a very huge issue that we should address right now, but we'll have to go into a short break. We are, you're watching Gen XYZ, we'll be back soon. to Gen XYZ and we've reached our last segment. I think the first two segments we touched upon a lot of things, a very controversial topic I must say and I think we left off by talking about corporates and how seniors think about their younger generation. Another thing that I really wanted to ask was about relationships and uh, not just love relationships but relationships with your sisters, your family and your friends because Mm, all three uh, generations would be having a different idea about this uh, definition of relationships. Dr. Sulochana, what do you think about it? Yeah, the relationship, the Asian culture, the word relationship comes, it's always a love affair, yes. right? It's about marriage, but relationship is more than that. The first relationship is the relationship within you, with you, right? Then your parents, then your colleagues, friends, then your loved one, your children, everything is a relationship, right? So I think our generation was committed to relationships, but the new generation are scared to commit, right? And there is a myth going on to be independent, to be successful, you need to be, uh, get into, a, what do you call, you need to be focused on yourself and not commit or not to have any relationships. That's a myth, right? Relationship should be respected and accepted and agreed, right? You shouldn't be in a relationship where there is a negativity. So I think if for you to be successful, it's not being not in a relationship, it's being happy. Happiness matters more than success. People think success is corporate, business and personality branding. Success is not that. Success is if you are happy with yourself, if you are happy with your relationship, it can be your parents, it can be your friends, it can be your boss, it can be your colleague and it can be your boyfriend or girlfriend. That is the happiness and the success. And in my age, I got married when 22, I had only one affair, that was my end affair. Because we didn't have the social media status say, I'm single, I'm in a relationship, I got engaged, now with no one and are waiting for someone, looking for, those were not there. There was no updates in our relationship. You got friendly, now he or she, now get married, then have kids. And the, the, there's a myth like, you know, in Sri Lanka, a lot of especially women think, if we get into a relationship, that is the end of it, that they will not have a future. But I think it's a myth. If you are getting into a relationship, he or she should be able to grow with you and understand you, love and respect you. Uh, what do you think about Dr. Sulochana's statement when she says that um, anyone, in order to be successful, they should not commit themselves into a relationship? What are your thoughts on that? I, of course, think that a relationship, be it with, like uh, Dr. Sulochana said, your parents, your loved one, whoever you find, your uh, siblings, uh, whatever it is, I think you have to find whoever it is that wants you to like grow in it, right? Um, in, in a way, it's right. We are all scared of commitment. Our generation is very scared of commitment because we see it as a very restrictive thing. But what I feel is, um, and, and which I feel that I'm lucky today because I have someone who allows me to grow in our relationship. I have someone who respects me, uh, who values my work and my time and my contribution into the relationship plus also allowing that person also to grow in the relationship. Um, with my parents, yes, it may have started off rough but I feel like when the respect came up, um, when the maturity came in, 
it became a much better relationship and that too with that understanding and commitment together to understand each other when it comes to your uh, more love kind of relationship it's the same thing it's the commitment it's the understanding it's the uh, allowing each other to grow um, you shouldn't feel scared to allow that other person to grow it should definitely be to grow and then going on from there so I, I feel that we need to take relationships serious in our life but we should prioritize ourselves as well and social media hasn't made relationships any easier right you get into social media one picture one click can be taken in a very wrong way on social media nowadays and I and I I'm a advocate for social media as well I like the good benefits coming from it but I also feel like on the opposite side social media can also be an absolute double-edged sword which it can be used for the worst and the wrong reasons right so taking into account all of this I think we have to be mature we have to be um, grown up about the decisions and the things that we do but also take we shouldn't feel scared to take that step as well into a commitment or something but saying that I don't never should any woman at any point of time feel or confuse love with any abusive kind of uh, method and way of uh, treatment and I feel I want to address this even though it is a bit of a taboo and it's a little bit of a controversial topic I feel like some people confuse uh, an abusive slash controlling relationship as a love relationship if someone is controlling you they are not loving you right there is a difference there so we need to make sure to establish the, the changes that are there, the, the differences rather that are there and then get into loving, nurturing, growing relationships be it with your parents, be it with your loved one, be it with your siblings, be it with anything you should always feel respected, loved and open communication should go on um, so yeah, that's really my view of relationships Something that I caught on is when you said controlling is not a good relationship that means it's not you're not having a good relationship but how can the youth identify let it be with their girlfriends or boyfriends or even their parents their parents can be controlling sometimes too how can you justify the difference uh, and identify okay this is they're teaching us and they're not controlling us so I think dr. Sulojana can jump in at some point and say this but when I say controlling Controlling of a parent is very different to controlling of a loved one or a person that you are with. When you are a parent, you are their child. They want essentially what is best for you. That what they mentally. think. Parents are not controlling. Yeah. Parents are mentally. Relationship with your boyfriend, with your friend, with your girlfriend, with your husband, with your spouse and may not allowing you to be who you are that is controlling yes i think exactly. our younger generations are sometimes confusing this thought with their parents thinking that okay this is not mentoring they, my parents are trying to control me and they uh, move out of their ways for it you know i think you're looking very confused and looking here and there so t tell us something about you and what are your thoughts on relationships relationships for my generation it's a new thing actually yeah learning yeah, still on learning process no so relationships as onelaki mentioned the main thing is mutual understanding mm -hmm. there's no mutual understanding means there's no positive relationship so we have to maintain a good mutual understanding and another thing i would like to mention is so our generation due due to corona also we are starting relationships on uh, social media platform as a generation users use a lot of social media so we are starting relationships more than physically in uh, social media so it's good i think I, I don't think it's bad i think it's good but we should learn how to maintain it lot of people lot of colleagues start relationship but after one month, two months, they stop it. So like mainly with friends, with girls. Uh, so we have to maintain it. The main thing is that. So 
one is mutual mutual understanding second is we should know how to maintain it that's the main two things in my opinion okay and this is coming out of an 18 year old and <laughs> quite impressed uh, I think we've come to our end of our segment. I think we are running out of time as well. But before we end, I really want to get your thoughts on bridging this gap between generations. Now, we had this discussion and what I've noticed is all three have different points of views and sometimes we were able to agree on a few as well. But most of the times, it's always disagreements like in the society out there. Is there a way that we can address this issue and minimalize it? to an extent where both generations or two different generations can come to a point and have a mutual understanding on this? I believe that when I started off with this whole uh, generational gap leadership or this whole generation difference, I think the best way that you can go around it is the older generation needs to understand that the newer generation, they, we need to make up, they need to give us a pathway to be who we are, uh, but we also need to learn how to take the guidance and experience from them. Our generation plus the generations younger than us as well or after us need to learn how to mature and uh, be able to commit, uh, be able to um, really see things. Uh, as a joint unit together rather than just fighting each other all the time, taking away that blame game that we were talking about before but finding solutions together rather than only creating problems between each other and I think that will only come from the maturity between us where we sit and are able to talk, understand and each one gives each person the space on the platform that they need. Would you all also say the same or so do you I'm have anywhere in the two segment and I do not know where I belong <laughs> because I believe in Facebook, my daughter says Facebook for your age, Instagram and TikTok is for our age, but I'm in all three, right? So I feel that we also should give a space to y'all and also y'all also should give a space to us. While we are giving each other the space, just don't tick boxes of your age. Tick the attitudes of your our age. Both, I would say. X, Y, Z, all generations and our generation. Tick the attitudes and also stop being inspirational on social media. Live your life as an inspirational personality. That's the best way to live along. Yeah, what do you have to say on your final thoughts? So, all the things are said by <laughs> Dr. Solochana and only Akki. So I have to say what I have said, uh, we are still young, we have time, so our generation we have time. So my, op my, th my opinion is we have to first collect and, and uh, add the experience from them. We have time now so we can uh, use that experience later. So we have time first as a youngest generation representing here. So we have time, so my ad advice to all the colleagues of my age is just wait, we have time, no hurry, just, just wait, just wait, the wait. Pa no, wait, patient, uh, we can't go, we go on, we can't live in society by our own in our age because there are a lot of dangerous things happening, lot of responsibilities that we can't bear. So first just be patient and after maybe in only Aki's age, or only <laughs> age, we can think out of the box. That's my opinion and advice. Okay, well I think we got a lot of learnings from this uh, discussion. I would say three different views, three different generations and three different thoughts and I think our viewers out there were able to get some sort of idea from this and it was very useful. What I also would like to say is I completely agree with all three. It's just that, you know, I really wish that our generation also will find that gap between our older seniors and the younger people and we'll be able to somehow move on and as Dr. Sulochana said, it's always better to be happy and live your life. So with that, we, I would like to end today's episode of Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another pertaining topic or issue regarding the youth. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night. <laughs>